limits of the measure of maximal, maximal entropy for geodesic flows on certain manifolds without conjugate points. Yeah, first thank you the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to talk here. So, uh, as it says, it's about measure of maximum entropy on for the geodesic flow on certain manifolds without conjugate points. So, uh, basically what I will try to do is try to first explain two, two different ways to construct the measure of maximum entropy, two geometric ways that gives a lot of structure of the measure. And the second part of the talk, I will try to, to, to use some dynamics to prove uniqueness and to unify these, these two constructions and try to uh, say now what are the properties of this measure once we have uniqueness. So, first of all, I will start by just... So, even though the title is on certain manifold without conjugate points, but what I'm going to talk about will be true for all surfaces higher genius without conjugate points, and on higher dimensions, there are some conditions. That's why I said certain manifolds. And before I start, this is a joint work with Gerhard Knipper, who is in Bochum, and von Klimanaga, he's from Houston. So, during this talk, so I will start by just taking M is a closed Riemannian surface. These are conjugate points. Okay, MG, I have a metric. I'm guessing that most people here are familiar with uh, uh, like uh, manifold without conjugate points. It just means that you don't have a non-trivial Jacobi field that is vanishing twice along a, along a geodesic. Okay, and and I have to talk about the entropy, the entropy of the geodesic flow. Like the geodesic flows of of uh, on this manifold is a, is a flow that is living on the unit tangent bundle. You give me a vector. Of, of unit lengths, I follow the geodesic. That's the geodesic flow. And the entropy, the entropy of a flow is defined in a very general way. It's, it's a way, to, it's a way to, to quantify somehow the complexity of the system. Uh, like to define the entropy normally, you look at the distinguishable orbit up to time epsilon, and up to time t with like distance epsilon, and you count this distinguishable orbit. If this is exponential with time, the flow has positive entropy. If it is, if it is sub-exponential, it has zero entropy. But for the case of geodesic flow, there is, a, there is a characterization of this entropy. That's what I will use just for the sake of this talk, like the topological entropy. the geodesic flow, I denote it by F, which is on MG, is given by so sometimes I will just write H, sometimes H top is the limit this is a characterization. There is a normal definition, but for geodesic flow on non-conjugate points, we have this log of volume of, like the growth of balls, where x is in the universal cover. This is a growth of balls in the universal cover. This gives a, this formula is due to Manning in the negative, in the non-positive curvature. And it was proved by Freire Manye in the uh, setting of no conjugate points. I like for this talk to use this to use this definition because 
For instance, if I'm in a case of surface, I'm in dimension two, I know that this quantity is always positive because I know there is a background metric of negative curvature and that background metric of negative curvature, the entropy is positive and you have the equivalence between the distance that will give a pseudo positive entropy for, for the flow in, negative, in non, no, no conjugate points. So this is the, ent the entropy of the system. Now there is a, there is a, there's a different notion of entropy, which is a measure theoretic entropy. The measure theoretic entropy is a kind of the entropy with respect to a given measure. So for that, you take mu is a Borel probability measure. I, I choose it to be F invariant, like invariant by the flow. And if you pick a partition, a measurable partition, let's say A equals A1, AM, measurable partition. Mu measurable partition. There is a, there is a, a way to refine, if you have some hyperbolicity, to refine this partition by considering the partition AN, AN which is defined by the intersection. So I will explain in a minute what this means of phi, how did I know, yeah, minus one of A. So this notation is just means that you take N intersections of the pre-images of these partition element. And you can define the measure theoretic entropy, which is subordinate to the measure mu, is the limit when n goes to infinity of the sum of minus mu alpha log of mu alpha, where alpha is in a n. This is a measure theoretic entropy. Now, the relation between these two entropy is given by the variational principle, which says you that the, the topological entropy can be achieved as a supremum over the measure theoretic entropy. So this is a variational principle. Let's say that the stop equals the supremum mu probability measures of this. So one interesting question in dynamics that we're interested in is, uh, is to know the measure that maximizes, like the measure of maximal entropy. A measure maximizing this is called a measure of maximal entropy and some properties of this measure. And, and in this case of, of, of geodesic flow, we, we all know that there is, a, there is a, like the well-known Louisville measure, the volume measure which in, in most cases is not the measure of maximum entropy. It is the measure of maximum entropy for surfaces only when you have negative, constant negative curvature. This was proved by Catoc, and in general it is conjectured that these two measures, the measure of maximum entropy and the Lewin measure, they coincide only when the, when the space is locally symmetric. Okay, so, so in general the measure we are interested in this talk is not the measure, the Louisville measure. So, so I, I, I want now to first describe a way to construct this measure in this setting of geodesic flow without conjugate points via the first construction that I will present is via the so-called the Patterson-Sullivan measures. These are, these are type of measures that you can do generally in, in all Gromov hyperbolic spaces. You can, you can carry out this construction. So to do this, we look at the, the point carry series. Let's say given, OK, we do not gamma as a fundamental group of M. We know that this acts on the, on the elements on M tilde as isometric. This group is, is isomorphic to the deck transformation, which acts as isometric on the on the universal cover of the manifold. And now given S in R, P 
and Q in M tilde, there is this point chi series that is defined by P, S, Q, P. And this quantity uh, for a gram of hyperbolic manifold, like surfaces uh, without conjugate points, we have by by corner that m tilde gram of hyperbolic implies that. We have this is finite when S is bigger than the topological entropy. It's bigger than the topological entropy and infinite otherwise, when S is strictly less than the topological entropy. Yeah. But there is a, there is a interesting point here that and since this measure, you can. So before I go to that, I, I need to consider the usual compactification of the universal cover, just taking the, the equivalence classes of geodesic rays that are asymptotic. I have the boundary of M tilde. And using, using the, the simple triangle inequality here, you can see that the, the nu, oops, before I go to that, I first need to define what the measure is. So if I'm given P, I have ni P Q S is given by one over P S X no, Q Q of the sum. You just take the weighted uh, along the, the delta, the Dirac delta distribution, and you, you normalize it by this quantity. And just using simple triangle inequality, you can see that the measure nu of the closure of the universal cover, like CL of M tilde, this is bounded by exponential of minus S D. P Q that this is a, this defines a finite a finite measure. Now there is a there is a the first the first properties of this measure is 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 when we take the limit as s goes to infinity. We can have weak limits of measures that have some nice properties, like lemma one. There exists SK that is going to H, such that for every P in M tilde, limit when K goes to infinity of nu. SK PX, PQ, sorry, 
exists. This measure exists, and we call it nu p. And that the, this family of measure has a nice property, and we have three nice properties here that this family of measure nu p, p and m tilde is gamma equivariant. By this, we just mean that it is preserved under gamma. Like, if you take for every a in the boundary of m tilde, we have nu of gamma p of gamma a equals nu p of a. And there is another interesting property which says that these two, these measures are not like singular. Like they are absolutely continuous with respect to each other. Ni p over ni q minus h. So b p q psi. Uh, allow me to just describe after what is this quantity after I finish this. This for every psi. Psi is a, an element on the boundary. So this is a subset. And the last property, which is very important, is that the support of nu p is a whole, is a whole boundary. So I will discuss how to prove this first. I mean, the first two items, for instance, the first item, uh, like the, the, the existence of the limit on the gamma equivalence is kind of simple, because if you take k compact subset, then uh, using, the, using the finiteness of this measure, there is a, there is a sequence, hk, converging to h says that you have the limit of nu s k p q exists for all points, for all p in k. And if you use, actually, the definition of the measure here, you can see that nu p, this uh, nu S k nu s gamma p q of a subset A equals of gamma A equals nu s p q A. And so if you use this and the fact that the manifold is a compact quotient, then you can see that you have the same subsequence for all the points once you have it for one compact set. And, and the, the, the gamma equivalence also follows. So this gives existence of limit for all p and gamma equivalence. This, the second property. So before I prove the second property, I should say what this quantity is. Uh, this quantity is just, is just like the Boosman function attached to this psi, the, boundary, the boundary point psi and connecting the geodesics to p. So usually, this is a picture you have for the, so let's say I'm, I have here my point p and this is psi, I have a geodesic that is connecting p to psi. Here I'm using actually a key property that is not yet known in higher dimension, like any two points, like uh, 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 through this point, there is only one geodesic connecting p to psi. Like that is called the, diverg the divergence property. Like two geodesic emanating from the, from the same point should diverge. 
but that is true for surfaces, but in higher dimension it's not known whether it's true or not. So these are some type of restriction that one would need to, uh, what we need to use if you consider higher dimensional, higher dimensional manifold. So let's say I have this geodesic C. So uh, B, P, Q, psi is nothing as uh, the Boosman function, limit when t goes to infinity of the distance C, T, Q minus T. This is just the Boosman function. And actually, using the, 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 uh, the, the second property will follow directly from this inequality that I will write, but probably won't have time to discuss the proof. But I will say a few words. So we have this, quant this equation limit when z tends to psi of d p z minus d q z so i mean in in general in negative curvature for instance this equation you can have it by 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 just seeing that these horospheres the horospheres that you have, which are the limits, the, the, the lower set of the Boosman function, you can get them as limit of spheres. And, and, and you, uh, you, will, uh, you will immediately have this equation. And this equation will, is a definition, will, will exactly imply this condition. So this implies B. And uh, yeah. And the, the last property is very important for the construction of this measure, which is the support of this measure. Because in general, when you, when you want to construct measure of maximum entropy, you want at least to see that this measure will see your Borel sigma algebra, like will give positive measures to open set, for instance. So to 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 prove this by, by the gamma equivalence, if you, you can you can remark that if C is not in the support of of nu P, then gamma of P is not also in the support. My gamma equivalence. This for all gamma. Gamma. So in particular, if you take if you take an open set U says that nu P of U equals zero implies that nu gamma P of U is nu gamma P of gamma U equals zero for all gamma. And here, you, you, one needs to use the fact that the action, the action of gamma on the boundary is, is minimal, like it's transitive, to prove now that the, the measure of the boundary will be 0 after having this property. So this gamma acting minimally and on implies that nu p of, which would say that this measure is singular and that contradicts the second assertion here. The fact that gamma act minimally also, you can, you can have it by, by proving that in general case, the, ge the geodesic flow is transitive. Like if there is a dense orbit, if the geodesic flow is transitive, you can have that gamma act minimally on the boundary of M tilde which is the case in the, in the non-conjugate points, which was proved, I think, by Eberlein. So, so this proved the last, the last assertion. Yeah, and now once you have, you have these Patterson-Sullivan measures, you want now to construct a measure on the unit tangent bundle in your manifold by just projecting this along flow lines. So this is how we construct. So now we define let 
steps. Okay, this is the definition. Mu bar be a measure on the boundary of M tilde minus the diagonal defined by So I won't use this notation. I'll just write minus h b p q psi plus b p q eta. So d, just a product measure. And this this quantity is. Is just like the, the, the Gromov product. If you look at the two points, let's say this is eta, you fix your point P. Okay, I would not fix it on the geodesic, otherwise it will be it will look at something. So you take this is your point P. You take those two horospheres and this distance gives you the what you have here on the exponents. So sometimes people denote it by the, the gram of product psi eta p, fixing p, like this. OK. Now, so clearly by gamma equivalence of, of, of nu p, mu p is, mu bar is also gamma equivalent. Yes. And from this, now we want to, to define a measure on the unit tangent bundle by just projecting along. I have a question, actually. Yes. So this new PQS, mm -hmm. it seems like it's like a measure on M tilde. So how do you get measure on the boundary from that? Sorry? Or ah, just, just because the, the accumulation point of the, of, uh, of, 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 of uh, if you take the accumulation point of this orbit, it is exactly the boundary of. It is exactly the boundary of. So if you take accumulation, this is exactly the boundary of M tilde. Yeah, that's why this measure is a. Yeah. Yeah. Just because we have a, we have M tilde is co-compact, so we will have this property that the, the accumulation point of the orbit of a point is is exactly the boundary, the whole boundary. So yeah, so I will continue defining the measure. So before that, let me just let me just uh, let me just. Uh, uh, consider a map P, which is defined on the unit tangent bundle of the universal cover to the product by just taking any vector, you associate the two points CV minus infinity and CV plus infinity, like the two end points. Like if I take a curve here, if I take a, a vector here, So this is V. P of V will be, let's say, psi prime, eta prime. This is just uh, taking the, the two asymptotic point of this geodesic. Okay. Now to define now the, the, the measure on the let mu tilde be the measure on T1 M tilde. It is defined by so mu tilde of A minus the diagonal of the supremum of so this looks crazy, but in certain specific cases we will see that it's very simple actually. And see V lambda one 
of L V A. I will explain what these quantities are. It says that V is in P minus one of psi eta D mu bar of psi eta. See that this quantity is nothing but in the case of in the case of negative curvature, for instance, that I know that any two I have like uh, any two points, any two points in the boundary, I have just one geodesic, which is not true in non-positive curvature because you can have flat strip that you have two different geodesics. That's why we need to take the supremum. But but in the case of in the case of, of negative curvature, this is just the length of the part of the geodesic that stays inside the set A. So so this notation is just the supremum. LVA is just the supremum of the time such that, such that the geodesic CVT stays in A. And lambda is just the Lubeck measure, like the, the maximal, yeah. yeah. So in the, in the setting of conjugate points, you might, I mean, even in non-positive curvature, you might have two geodesics that are asymptotic and two distinct geodesics. So that's why we needed to do this, this, this thing here. And, and another remark is, is that the only way, the only way for this measure, for instance, to go to infinity, like this quantity to be infinite, is eta and psi to be very close. Like if you have eta and psi very close, you might, you might have this quantity. That is that quantity. Yeah, you might have this quantity very large, and you might have this blow up. So, but if A is in a compact set, is in K, which is in M tilde, like this is compact, then mu tilde of A is finite. And then by the same gamma equivariance, you know that the measure is finite on the unit tangent bundle of the of the gamma equivariance. is finite. And, uh, and also the same gamma equivalence, and it descends. And mu tilde descends to a measure mu. I don't know how to call it, mu on T1M. So I consider this guy to be a, a normalized measure. So I, I, I project to T1M, and after I normalize, I call it mu for, for it to be a probability measure. And, and clearly, this measure by gamma equivalence also, it is invariant by the flow. So the, the next step is to prove that this measure is a measure of maximum entropy. It, 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 it realizes the maximum of the, of the entropy. So I will also, yeah, I will try to discuss that. So there is this lemma that H mu is H top. So to, to, to prove this, I mean, the usual is to just try to, 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 to do the, to calculate the metric entropy given a partition, a mu measurable partition. So having, having this mu measurable partition, so I consider a n. So uh, also, I can I can suppose the diameter of the partition element are less than epsilon, which is less than the diameter of my manifold. So, uh, alpha uh, a set alpha is in the the refined partition implies that alpha is in is a subset of the intersection from i equals to n minus 1 of phi minus 1 of phi, phi minus i 
I don't like I, I call it K. VK, V, Epsilon. Oh, what did I say? Ball. A ball here. Because these are, these, are, these are defined as a set that stay together, uh, of, like that stay in AI all the time, so the, till N, so, so alpha is in that size. So, so the, the next step would be to, to estimate the measure of, of alpha. Because if you remember, the, I'll just rewrite it, the metric entropy is just the limit when n goes to infinity of minus mu alpha log of mu alpha for alpha in a n, right? So, yeah, yeah. So, to, to measure alpha, it, it boils down to, to projecting this set alpha on the boundary and try to look at the measure that you have in the boundary, the measure of nu p. So to do all this, I fix a point p, okay? This measure was given by point p, but our construction will say that you do it for any point, you get the same measure. So p was fixed. P was fixed. And since these guys are less than, are less than the diameter, I'm supposing that uh, alpha tilde lift to uh, is a, a lift of alpha. And alpha tilde has diameter also less than epsilon in the in the unit tangent band of the universal cover. So what is what is the picture? Is this is what you're having? So let's say I'm, I have here my vector v here, and I have the geodesic. Let's call this point, which is CVN, let's call it x here. What I can do is I can define the, so first of all, we can see that p, the distance between, let's say, OK. so. So these are tildes in the universal cover, but sometimes I might omit them. So the distance between P, so P is the projection from T1M tilde to, just uh, to give the base point. So the distance between P and PV tilde, this is, let's all equals, let's say, two epsilon plus the diameter of M. I mean, just a bound that doesn't depend on n. This is a universal bound. Uh, so, so what I can do if I consider here the ball of center B of center P V tilde and of radius this quantity. Let's call it R zero. I can define what is called the projection of this set. The projection is defined. You take the geodesics that are joining these points here, and this set, uh, we call it the P R X of this ball B P V tilde R zero. Okay, so. And also, we can do the same by taking an, an epsilon ball here. So let's say here I have an epsilon ball, B, X, epsilon. So here what I do is I continue this point. I call it C. Now I can project from C to this ball, and I have another set that is like this. Oops. And this we call it P, oops, P R C of B X epsilon. And you can see that the projection of the set alpha, P alpha, is in the set of the union of eta times P eta, P R eta of B 
x epsilon. So where eta is running here, the projection is just given by the, the, the product of these two guys here. Eta is in P R X of B E V tilde R zero. Right? So it 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 it's so measuring alpha, so I mean alpha tilde. So this is a, the, the lift in the universal cover. So measuring uh, uh, the measure of alpha uh, mu. So to know the measure of alpha, it will be uh, uh, enough to know the measure of of this of this uh, pr x b of p v tilde at zero. And by the f property of the lemma that I wrote, uh, nu p and nu q are, 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 are absolutely continuous with respect to each other. So you will have this as less than exponential of minus h distance between p and q times nu q of the same quantity, p r x b p v tilde r0. Now this we can. We can estimate because we know. Oops, what did I ah? What did I call Q? Oops. Now I want to measure these sets, not these ones. So eta. Sorry, x epsilon. Eta. X epsilon, and where Q now is the point that is just a point on the geodesic. So this is a point eta joining eta to x. Q is a, a point just in this ball. Yeah, Q is just a random point in that ball. And, and, and this also using the, so also from the, the lemma one, this is from lemma one. Also from lemma one, you can get that this is minus h dpq times exponential minus s minus h distance between x q and the distance between x and q just you use triangle inequality to see that this is of order n this is roughly n minus r0 something like that minus probably this the, the, the diameter of the ball. So this will be less or equals a constant times exponential minus hn. Yeah, I should say there are some non-trivial steps here. For instance, from here to here, you need lemma one, also you need to have a lower bound on the measure of these projections. But just for today, I will not discuss that. So this will imply that the measure of alpha OK, I can also come to the, is less than a constant, a universal constant times e minus hn. And this, roughly, you plug it here, you will have the topological entropy, the, the metric entropy, sorry, the major theoretic entropy will be bigger or equals to h. And we know also that it is, this is less than h, so it realizes the measure of maximal entropy. Yeah. And yeah, so this, this says that this Patterson Sullivan measures, they give measure of maximal entropy. So, so if you sort of take the solution, yeah. Yes, that's a good question. The, the, the thing is, if you, if you take the inf instead of the soup, you might have problems to, because you know, the, the part of the set that is inside this strip might be, OK, let's say if it is, if it is a, a non-positive curvature that you have the, the flat strip theorem is true that you know these strips are flat. In that case, you probably might take the, the inf, and it would give the exact same thing. 
But in this uh, non-conjugate points, we don't know really the geometry of these strips, like the geodes that are asymptotics. And in that case, there is a, there is a slight difficulty to, to, to change this to inf related, to this, related to these estimates. But probably in non-positive curvature, or if the flat strip theorem holds, you could, you could replace it to an nth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. So let me tell you some key properties of this measure that are good for the future is that this measure mu, we have this, that mu is an MME, measure of maximum entropy, and mu is fully supported. Mu is fully supported because it is fully supported on the boundary, and, and, and the, 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 the boundary is given by just open sets here are just you take a point, you take an angle, and you, you project to the boundary. So if the measure is fully supported here, so the measure on the unit tangent boundary is fully supported, and also nu p, like the projection, uh, the measure is given by a product measure of the boundary, like mu projects to a product measure on this. This is really good, actually. Uh, this property is very important to prove, for instance, this measure is mixing. Uh, the flow is mixing with respect to this measure. And this property is very good to, to, to know the, the density of periodic orbit and so on. I will say that in a minute. But I'm not sure I will get to the part to prove the mixing for using the, the, the fact that this measure is a product measure. Actually, there is a general, there's a general result by Babilo that proves that as long as this measure is a product measure and the length spectrum is not arithmetic, then, then you have mixing. Uh, oh, and the measure sees a lot of hyperbolicity. That's also another condition, because to prove mixing, you need some type of hyperbolicity. So Babilo has a general result that uh, if the measure is a product measure, and the measure sees, is supported in a good hyperbolic set, and the length spectrum is not arithmetic, so it is mixing. So having the measure as a product measure is very important. And fully supported also is very important, as I will discuss a second way the second point of constructing, of constructing measure of maximum entropy is through limiting distribution, distributions along closed orbit, along closed orbits. Yeah. So. So basically, if you. You can, you can always define a measure that is supported on the closed orbit of finite time. Let's say I fix my time, t, and I fix also, like I can, I can put measures, let me write it down, for t delta positive. I can define a measure like this. Mu t is defined as the integral on t1 m of phi d mu t is exactly the cardinality. So I will say what this is, phi t delta. Gamma in phi t delta of 1 over length of gamma phi along gamma s ds. So this quantity is the cardinality of the, of the uh, periodic orbits of period less than t and that are delta separated. I mean, these are the homotopy classes of those periodic orbits. So you define this. There is a general result, the general theorem that is in some many textbooks that if it's not only for geodesic flow, for any flow, in, in fact, if so limit of log of the cardinality of p t delta 
of uh, T equals H. This implies that any accumulation point any accumulation point of this mu t is an MME. So if you know that you have uh, the, the growth rate of this periodic orbit is of order of the topological entropy, then you can conclude that you can just construct measure of maximum entropy by averaging along these cross orbits. So this is a very general result. I mean, if you, if you know the definition of entropy using uh, epsilon delta separated sets, you can see exactly that this is not very difficult to prove. And, but in our case now, in our case of surfaces, we have a result by corner and Knipper that prove that we have this asymptotic bound. Actually, they have that, they have that exponential of ht over t okay, I'll put t here. is greater or equals to log of cardinality of p t delta And this result is true even in higher dimension by supposing that you have a background metric of negative curvature and that you have the divergence property, that, that two geodesics emanating at the same point are diverging in, at infinity. So uh, yeah, in, in the case of surface, again, everything, is, what, everything that I'm saying is true. But in higher dimension, you would need to assume you have a background metric of negative curvature and you have the divergence property. So from this. You can see this gives also another way of proving measure of maximum entropy. Now, one nice consequence of uniqueness would be, so in view of this uniqueness, remark, uniqueness in our case would imply that density of periodic orbits. Why? Because, because uh, that measure is fully supported, and this measure is given by distribution along the periodic orbit. So if these two measures are the same, these two limit measures are the same, so you have the periodic point at dense. Yeah, by fully, by the fact that me is fully supported. So for the rest of the talk, I will try to now talk about how to get uniqueness of this MME. Yes, so so usually the way to prove uniqueness is to prove ergodicity of the measure. Because this measure that we construct, you can prove that if you have two measures of maximum entropy, they are absolutely continuous respect to each other. Because if they are not absolutely continuous with respect to each other, one is supported here, one is supported here, you can create more entropy by using transitivity, by using orbits that are going here, going there, and so on. You create more entropy. That gives a contradiction. So two Two measures of maximum entropy are absolutely continuous with respect to each other, and use ergodicity to prove the, to, to you use, uh, if it is ergodic, so they should be the same. And usually, the way to prove ergodicity is through Hoff argument, which tells you that basically if you, if you average, so it basically boils down to this, of continuous function along orbit to a constant. This is rough, almost every x. The way to, to see this is like, 
if you look at your universal cover, if you have constant negative curvature, if you average this, you take these two points on the same stable horosphere, they have the same feature, so this function will be constant. And also, if you take points on the same horos unstable horospheres or so, they, they have the same path. So usually, you will have that if you have enough hyperbolicity. So enough hyperbolicity implies ergodicity. So this is very rough, yeah. But usually, in this setting of non-conjugate points, I don't have enough hyperbolicity. I don't know even if I have some exponential hyperbolicity in some domains. Unlike in non-positive curvature, non-positive curvature, I know, for instance, if I have this, this surface with a, it should be flat here. I know in these domains, I don't, have good, I don't have good hyperbolicity, but here I have good hyperbolicity, and these are just flat strips. So here you might have flat strips, but these strips are also periodic, so they are just countable. So it's like you have enough hyperbolicity in good part of your domain. But in non-positive curvature, we don't have the flat strip term to tell you that, for instance, you have countable in many of these strips. And, and also, we don't know, like, outside here, which type of hyperbolicity we have. Is it exponential or not? But in non-positive curvature, you have all, all, of, all of this. So what we have to do is to is to use the usual, the, the Bowen, Bowen method of proving hyperbolicity. So, so we prove ergodicity through Bowen argument. I mean, also Bowen argument would require hyperbolicity. What is Bowen argument is based on specification, what is called specification, and transitivity. Uh, and not transitivity, I mean expansivity, yes. Specification, what does it mean? It means that you give me pieces of orbits, any number you want, I can find one orbit that shadow this, spend some time, shadow this, spend some time, shadow this, and so on. That's specification, which is just a type of shadowing plus transitivity. And in general, also, to prove, to prove specification, you really need local product structure, hyperbolicity. But here I will tell in a minute how do we get this specification. And expensivity is just, expensivity is just avoiding these flat strips. Like, uh, uh, two different geodesics are diverging as in forward and backward time. So, the distance between the set of point V says that distance between phi T V and, so, let's say W, so given V, so let's say this is gamma V, Ah, this is not a, so V is in T1M. For all T in R, this is a piece of orbit. This is really a piece of minus epsilon. Ah, it's up. Epsilon of V. So this is expansivity. So this is usually, you have these two properties. You can do like, uh, like coding. You can code your, your dynamics by a, a subshift of finite time, and you have uniqueness there. You can bring it to, to this system. And, and recently, there is a nice result by, by, by Klimanaga and Thompson. And Thompson that says that if you have if you have specification i am not going to be very precise here specification at scale delta plus entropy gap i will explain what these things are entropy gap at scale epsilon epsilon v is Delta bigger than much bigger than epsilon, then you have then unique MME. 
So specification of scale delta is just how close you are shadowing these orbits. This should be delta. In the usual bond specification, it says that you should shadow at any small scale. So this result is, is allowing the scale to do not be big. So, and what is this entropy gap? It says that you might allow some strips, some, some non-expensive vectors, but they should not carry entropy. Like the entropy of these, of these bad orbits should be strictly less than the entropy of the whole system. Because you can imagine that if this set is carrying, is, is, is carrying entropy, you can build a measure of maximum entropy here, a measure of maximum entropy there, so you will not have uniqueness. So basically, you need a gap, entropy gap, between these two sets, and, and you need a specification at certain scale. How do we get the, the specification? The specification, we do it through a Morse, Morse comparison. There is, a, there is a Morse lemma that tells you that, for instance, in the case of surface, or you have a background metric of negative curvature, any geodesic with your, with your metric without conjugate points, there is another geodesic in, in negative curvature that stay in a bounded distance. Like, I have here, this is my universal cover. If I have this geodesic here, I have another geodesic. So this is negative curvature, let's say this is g equals minus one, and this is g zero, this is the metric. So you have, and, and this distance is fixed. You don't know how small it is, but it's fixed. This is a Morse comparison. So what you do, and, and it, it, uh, if you have a background metric of negative curvature, you know that the geodesic flow with respect to negative curvature is anosov, then it has all the good specification you want. So that's what we do. If you, if you give me pieces of orbit in this general metric, I find the most comparison that gives me these pieces, like this, by Morse. And then, and then I can use the hyperbolicity of the metric of negative curvature to do shadowing here. I can do shadowing here. And then I come back to the original metric, and I will have also, yeah. So this gives specification, but at an a priori very large scale, because you don't know, you don't know the, the scale that you are. It just depends on the, on the manifold. So, so to get specification, we use MOS plus background metric of negative curvature implies specification at scale delta. Yeah, but you, 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 you cannot have a control on delta. Now, how about the, the entropy gap? Also, I, I know that there is a fixed epsilon there's a fixed epsilon for the, for the, for the non-expensive geodesics. There is a fixed, like there's a fixed epsilon for this gap here. There's a fixed epsilon that is universal for all geodesics that are, not, that are not expensive. So what you want to prove, you want to prove that the entropy, so the entropy on the, I call it non-expensive set, at all epsilon is zero. Well, so one should see that if, if this epsilon is, is big, like bigger than the, the diameter of my manifold, I can never get this. Because this is a flow on, 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 this is a flow on, on the unit tangent bundle of M, you know? So if epsilon is big, like the non-expensive set is, is, the, is everything because it's bigger than the diameter of my manifold. So what I have to do is to, to, to go to a finite cover of my manifold that has arbitrarily large injectivity radius that is big to guarantee that I can prove this. So what we do, we take finite cover, I mean we, finite cover of arbitrary 
large injectivity radius that would actually guarantee this because what because because if i have a if i have a positive entropy if i have positive entropy there is a, the usual pacing theory that tells you that you will have stable and unstable manifold for the case of surfaces you will have stable and unstable manifold and you have stable and unstable manifold the, the that point is expensive like that gives you that the non expensive set has has zero entropy and you know that your your flow has a has positive metric entropy, then you have the gap, and then that combining this with the results of Klimanaga and Thompson, you get uniqueness. And so here are a few points that need some talking is that uh, uh, these properties, like the, the general theorem in higher dimension we have, is this. So this is our, these are our assumptions. So we want H1 that mg, there is, a, uh, there is a background metric of negative curvature. There is a background metric of strictly negative curvature, because that would give me the specification I want there, because that would give me an answer, and we have specification. And H2, in high dimension, I would need entropy gap. Uh, so entropy gap, in dimension 2, is always true. We can prove it by just using Pessin theory. But in higher dimension, uh, we don't know. And H3 is we want the manifold to be residually finite. Because, because to be able to go to a finite cover of arbitrarily large injectivity radius, you need residual finiteness of the, of the manifold. And the fourth condition is to have divergence property. Because what I, all I said in the first part of this talk is under the divergence property that two geodesic emanating at the same point are diverging in, at infinity. So with this, we were able to conclude that Unique MME, unique MME, and and density of closed orbits, and also using the first construction that the measure has a product structure, we are able to prove that phi f the flow is mixing with respect to the unique MME is mixing with respect to the unique MME. Yeah, so I should say, uh, like, like these, these results, actually, it was proved for cases, like, as I said, in negative curvature, you have Anasov. It satisfies all these properties. In non-positive curvature and rank one, it was proved by, by Gerhard Knipper, 98. He, proves, he proved all this property using, I mean, he did not prove mixing, but uh, after later, uh, Babilo proved mixing using the construction. And, and Gerhard Knipper was using exactly the, the, uh, the Patterson-Sullivan measures. He was able to prove ergodicity and then uniqueness and so on. And also, for no focal points, it was also recently proved just last year by Katrin Gelford and Rafael Ruggero, and also it was proved by, by Cheng, Kao, and Park, who are in the University of Chicago. And for them, they also proved equilibrium steps and so on for the case of no focal points. But, but for us, we were able to do, to do not only the, uh, the measure of maximum entropy, but also the density of closed orbit by, by, by using Patterson-Sullivan measures and so on. I think this is what I wanted to say. <laughs>